Welcome to another Stormworks tutorial. Today, I'll be going over one specific use of the up-down block to split up Boolean signals. It's just something that can be utilized in all sorts of systems, but overwhelmingly, you'll probably want to use this setup for launching flares, switching RGB lights, and firing missiles. Basically, any time that you'll need to split up the output of a push button to activate multiple Boolean signals, this system will come into use. Alright, so we're out here right in front of the Draymore hangar, and I'm going to show you a little bit how this works. So we see we here we have five flares and we got one push button. So if we push it once, one of them's gonna go. Twice, second one, third, fourth, and fifth. All from the same push button. Just like that, we're gonna learn how to do the exact same thing today with the up-down block. Loading into the workbench, I'll build up a demo with five flares and one push button to demonstrate how the up-down block can launch all of them separately. This logic will work with any amount of flares, so you'll be able to add as many as you need. As always, we'll start with a small base. Grabbing the flare from my inventory, I'll also grab a push button. Now place the flares down in a line, and just put that push button somewhere where it doesn't get in the way. Let's also grab a medium battery and place that down as well. Hopping into the microcontroller editor, let's go ahead and name our processor 5 flares, or however many you might have. And I'll set up my width to 3, and length to 2, because I know the processor requires 6 logic nodes. 5 output and 1 input to function. It's critical that you name all of the outputs 1 through 5 because while wiring this all up, knowing which flare will fire first is really important. In the logic editor, I already have my blocks spaced out. I always like to keep a horizontal distance of 2 tiles and a vertical distance of 1 tile between blocks. This doesn't add functionality, but it helps my logic look clean. First thing we need to do is add a pulse block to our input. This will make sure every press, no matter how long, will always be the same length in this chip. Now, I need to grab an up-down block and a threshold gate. Place down the former right next to the boolean input and line up one threshold gate with every output. I strongly recommend having them in descending order. We'll start by connecting the input to the pulse, and that to the up-down block, and connecting the up-down block making sure to hold control to all threshold gates. Finally, every threshold gate should also be connected to its corresponding output. For the up-down block, the settings should be an increment of 1, because we want the number to go up by 1 every time the button is pressed, and it will enable a clamp of a maximum 5 because after the 5th flare is launched, we want this value to stop increasing. Now for the threshold gates, you'll actually want to set the threshold around plus or minus 0.1 from your target. So if my target is 1, I'm going to set my minimum to 0.9 and maximum to 1.1. So just to account for the tiny bit of inaccuracy the up-down block will produce every time it increases. So, fill in each threshold starting from the first all the way down. And your last one should have a minimum and a maximum of 4.9 and 5.1 respectively. That's basically it. We're going to save our work and exit the editor. Now we can search for and place down our microprocessor on our base and start hooking up the logic. Firstly, let's go ahead and connect up all the electricity from the battery, then connect your push button into the input, and finally, output 1 to flare 1, output 2 to flare 2, and so on. Alright, so we've got our little creation loaded up here, and let's go ahead and test this. First goes 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And just like that, we are done. Now, as you can see, guys, today wasn't a very long video, but I hope you enjoyed nonetheless, and I will hopefully be seeing you guys in the next one.